Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another exciting edition of Ed Puzzle Lecture Notes. Today, we're going to do what a lot of you guys love. It's called math. Now, before you freak out, it is really, really simple math. What are some things you're going to have to be able to do? You're going to have to be able to add. You can do that. You're going to have to be able to subtract. I know you know how to do that. You're going to have to be able to divide. I know you can do that. And you might have to multiply. I forget. You might have to multiply. So it's no complicated algebra or calculus or trigonometry. It's just basic math. All right, so the first thing we're going to look is what's called population density. Now you can see these two rectangular, we'll pretend like that's a field. Two rectangular fields, and they both have 15 dots. This little field right here, that rectangle has 15 dots, and so does this one. So they both have the same population, the same number of individuals or number of organisms. But you can see that this square over here is much smaller. Therefore, the dots are much closer together. There's not much space between them because it's a small square. Now over here, it's a larger square. Even though the population is equal, there are 15 dots, you can see that they're much more spread out in this population. There's a lot more space between them. And that's what population density is. How close together are all the individuals? So, what is the formula, formula for population density? Well, here it is. It is the population or the number of individuals. So, it's the population or number of individuals, number of gophers, birds, people, whatever. And then you're going to divide that by how big is the area. So, there it is. That is the formula for figuring out population density. It's the population or the number of individuals. How many individuals do we have? And we're going to divide that by how big is the area? How big is the area that these organisms are in? All right, so now I'm going to try one for you. Population density. So it's asking, what is the population density of students at Tulare Western if there are 1,900 students? And I believe we have somewhere around there. And I actually looked on Google Maps, and I tried to calculate how big Tulare Western is, and my number was it came out to about 2.5 million square feet. So the question is, what is the population density? How close together are the students at Tulare Western High School? Now this counts everything. It's counting the football field, the baseball fields, the track, everything, places where you're usually not at. But what is the population density? Well, remember, it equals the population or number of individuals divided by the area. All right, so let's just plug in those numbers. How many individuals do we have? Let me write this in blue. At Tulare Western, we have 1,900 students. So that's just students, not talking about teachers or security guards or anything else. How big is the area? The area is 2.5 million square feet. Now, a lot of you guys, so we're going to put that at the bottom, that's 2,500,000, that's what 2.5 million means. Now, I know a lot of times you guys think it's illegal to put a larger number on the bottom, which is called the denominator. You think that's illegal. It is not illegal. It is totally legal in the United States and California and pretty much everywhere to have a larger number on the bottom. You will get a decimal, but that's okay because that's what we want here. And now using my calculator, when I come up with that, my answer is going to be 0 0.00076 students per square feet. So notice, I did get a decimal there. And you know what? That's good, because that is the correct answer. So if you get a decimal, don't freak out. That sometimes is right. So that is the population density of Tulare Western. All I did was I divided 1,900 divided by 2.5 million, and I got 0 .00076 students per square feet. Don't forget the label. You've got to tell me what you're talking about. Make sure you label it. All right, now I'm going to let you guys try one. We're going to figure out the population density 
of squirrels. Well, how many squirrels do we have? That's what we need to know. We have 12 squirrels. How big is the area? It's 1,000 square meters. All right, let's see if you can come up with the right answer. All right, so let's do this one. So remember, population density equals the number of individuals. In this case, we're talking about squirrels, divided by how big is the area. All right, so number of individuals, 12. We have 12 squirrels. How big is the area? It's 1,000 square meters. Well, once again, we notice we have a larger number on the bottom. Totally legal. Don't freak out. Don't want to put the 1,000 on the top just because it's bigger. No, we're going to get a decimal. And when you do that, you're going to come up with the answer of 0.012 squirrels. We're talking about squirrels here per square meter. 0 0.012 squirrels per square meter. Hopefully you got that right. All right, our next one we're going to go over is called population growth. Population growth. Is your population growing? Is it staying the same? Or is your population actually shrinking? Is it getting lower? Well, first of all, you gotta, you got to know some things. What makes a population go up? What can make a population go up? Whether it's people, rabbits, birds, doesn't matter. Well, one thing that can make a population grow is births. Births plus make a population go up. Another thing that can make a population go up is called immigration. That makes a population go up. Immigration is when individuals move into a population. So when people move to the United States from another country, that's called immigration, and it makes the population of the United States go up. Now, what are the things that can make a population go down? Well, it's basically the opposite of births. Death, obviously deaths, when things die, that makes a population minus go down. And the opposite of immigration is called emigration. And that is when organisms, people, squirrels, whatever, are moving out. They're moving away from that population. And that actually makes the population go down. So all you got to do, here's the formula for population growth. First, births makes it go up. So you go births, and you're going to add... The other thing that makes the population go up, which is immigration. Then you're going to subtract the things that make a population go down. So you're going to subtract minus, it's not equal, minus deaths. And you're also going to minus emigration. And we'll usually just, you know, we'll make it smaller. We'll go B plus I births plus immigration minus everything that dies and minus everything that emigrates out. And that'll equal the population growth. Now remember, population growth can be negative. If your population is actually shrinking, it'll be a negative number. All right, so now I'll do one for you, and then we'll have you try one. So here we go, population growth. Remember, our formula is B, or births, plus I, immigration, births plus immigration, minus how many died, deaths, and we're also going to minus how many emigrated away, and that'll give you the population growth. So if you know the formulas, now it's just plugging in simple numbers. All right, how many births do we have? We had 185 births, so 185 plus, now we're going to see how many immigrated into the population, and you can see it right here, 34, who knows, might be people, immigrated in, so it'll be one, 185 plus 34. Now we're going to subtract the things that make a population go down. One of those is deaths. So we're going to subtract, there were 110 deaths. We're also going to subtract the people or gophers or whatever that emigrated away, so it'll be minus 22. And when I plug all these numbers into my calculator, I get it equals 
87. And we'll just say it's 87 chipmunks. I know it does not say in the, in the problem if it's chipmunks or people or whatever. We're going to say it was chipmunks. We're going to pretend. So when you calculate all of this, 185 plus 34 minus 110 minus 22, you get 87. And always remember to label it, whatever type of organism you're talking about. All right, so now here's one for you to try. I know it doesn't say it in the problem, but we're going to pretend like it says it's sharks. We're tracking a population of sharks, and we want to know if it's a population going up. Is it going down? Is it staying the same? That's what the population growth is. All right, so hopefully you remember the formula for population growth. See if you can get this one right. All right, so hopefully you remember the formula for population growth or population change is births plus immigration, B plus I, minus deaths, and minus how many emigrated out of the population. That's going to give us our population growth or change in population. All right, so let's go ahead and do it. How many births did we have? Right there. 33 new sharks were born. So 33 plus how many immigrants? How many sharks immigrated into the population? Well, we had 11. 33 plus 11. Now we got to subtract the things that make a population go down. How many sharks died? Looks like right here. We had 18 deaths. And now we're going to subtract how many sharks emigrated away. And there was nine. So there you go. Now the formula is all set up. Now all you need is to use your fingers or a calculator or your head, however you do it. I'm going to use a calculator. Now when I plugged all these numbers into my calculator, pretty easy to do. I came up with 17 sharks. Now remember, I'll give you a point for getting the right number, and I'll give you another point if you remember to label it. In this case, it was sharks. All right, thank you very much. Hope you enjoyed it, and I'll talk to you next time.